set before me. I will run the race that he set before me. I will not give up. I'll claim the victory. Receive Jesus. Understand the Bible. With Jesus, you're never alone. He's always with you. Hey, good morning, Crosspoint family. I want to say to all the dads in the room this morning, happy Father's Day. I'm glad to see all of you dads sitting out there with your families. It's Sunday, and it's our grand finale here for our VBS Activate Champions in training. Your kids this week have had a phenomenal time. God has touched their hearts as they've learned to, number one, receive Jesus, secondly, understand the Bible, and third, understand that they are never alone, that God is always with them. And so today, we're gonna encourage you to sit back and enjoy this Sunday that's geared for kids for all ages. There's gonna be great, it's gonna be a great morning of stories, and songs and fun but most of all today is a day to put your faith and trust in Jesus he's the coach that will be with you every day so sit back and enjoy the service God's got great things in store for you today hello boys and girls Perry Winkle here with our verse for activate champions in training the verse says let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 1b. Let's do it together. Ready, set, go. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 1b. One more time. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 1b. Oh, you are so good at this. See you later. Receive Jesus. Understand the Bible. Hey kids, I'm just an old stump, but even I know when you got Jesus, you're never alone. Chuck, it's Sunday morning. You know what that means? It means this is the last time. The last time for what? To see you looking like you. What do you mean, Chuck? The kids gave so much money that you are going to have a mohawk. Ha 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 ha! Oh, Chuck, you don't have to be so happy about that. But that's right, the kids have given so much money that, uh, well, this is the last time you'll see me with this haircut for a long time because I have to live with that pink mohawk for a whole month. A whole month? Oh, thanks. Rub it in, Chuck. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to have a great service this morning. We're going to just wrap up our VBS, and we're going to talk about being champions for Jesus. And everyone can be a champion for Jesus because he said, uh, he said that uh, he would give us life and life more abundantly. That's right. Life abundantly. Yep. And he's going to help us to be champions in all that we say and do. Jesus is our victory. That's right. See you later.
And now, because our kids are kingdom builders, it's the all-new PG! <laughs> oh, yeah. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Wow. Well, you probably can see the kids made their goal. They did. I'm going to say one thing. What's that? That looks really good on you. That looks really good on you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Now, Pastor Dan, here's what the, the challenge was. Yep. If, the, if the kids gave 2000 I got a mohawk. If they yes. gave 3000 I got a pink mohawk. Yes. Now, now, they gave $3,014.01. Wow, praise God. Let's give a praise hand for that. God. That is awesome. But, Pastor Dan, today's the last day of VBS. Oh, it is. Which means right. the contest isn't over. Oh, it is not over, is it? If the kids gave 4000 huh. you get a mohawk. That's if they true. give five, yours will look like mine. So parents, oh, wow. interested parties, generous people, you want to help the kids get to that 5,000 mark and give Pastor Dan a mohawk, right? All right, who wants to see right. that? Okay. So you can give today. We'll talk more about that later with your Kingdom Builders yep. giving. You generously give. Our kids, our, our, our goal this year for the kids is $12,000. And uh, VBS has always been a big part of that. And so we're hoping that uh, with your generosity, the kids can take that over the top for the whole year, and it'll be great. Yeah, we're but super excited especially, about it. especially, we want him to have that mohawk. But, you know, P Pastor Dan, <laughs> he said yes. He said yes. Pastor Do you know Dan someone came in this morning carrying like a gallon of ice cream of coins Going, I, where do I put this so you can get a mohawk? I love it. I I'm, love and it. And they're going through couch but cushions, the, everything. The best part about this, though, Pastor Dan, is that the kids are given to help missionaries yes. around the world. Isn't that awesome? The kids are learning to be kingdom builders, learning to be generous. Yeah. They've done great things to raise money. Yes, they have. Kids have painted paintings and sold them online. They, they've had lemonade sales. Yeah. Popsicle holders? Pops, uh, yeah, the pop. Those were yeah, cool. Freezy pop holders. Yeah. I mean, the, the kids have been so creative in raising money for missions. We're so proud proud of you kids, yes. and proud of you parents for encouraging your kids. Yes, praise God. Well, Pastor Dan, you have some announcements. Yes, I we'll do. we'll continue with the service. Sounds great. Thank you, PG. Wow. We are so excited for what's been taking place. Kids, again, great job. We're so proud of you and what you've been doing. And so first, I want to say welcome. If you're new, welcome. We're so glad that you have chosen to join us here at our church at Cross Point Church. In front of you, in the seat pocket in front of you, is a connect card. We'd love to be able to connect with you. So after service, we'd love to be able to connect with you. There is a t-shirt display out there, and we'd love to be able just to meet you, greet you, and welcome you to our church. And then if you're watching online, you can also click on the link in the comments, and you'll be able to fill out a digital connect card, and we'd love to be able to connect with you and welcome you to our our church. And so again, thank you for joining us. We have some incredible things that are happening here at Cross Point Church. And one of them is Kids Camp. Kids Camp is coming back, PG, and it's going to be awesome. It's for grades going into third through sixth grade. You will not want to miss this. And you know what? PG has all the information on that. And so if you don't know who PG is, look for the guy in the pink mohawk, all right? You'll be able to find him. But he has all the information for that. And then teens going uh, in 6th through 12th grade can also attend. It's July 5th through the 9th for them. Pastor Madison has all the details for that, or you can find it on the youth webpage just as well. And so make sure to get your kids and you signed up for camp. I'm going to tell you, it's a great way and a great investment for your kids. I'm telling you, it'll impact them right now, but it'll impact the rest of their future just as well. So it's a great investment. Make sure to get them signed up. Ladies, sisterhood. All right, June sisterhood. Scripture on Tuesday, June 29th at 6.30. Not going to want to miss it. It's here at the church. This month's topic is Battlefield of the Mind. You won't want to miss it. Make sure to grab a friend, all right? And Grief Share, we have a Grief Share Summer Series. We have a great program to help people who are struggling during difficult times. So if you're grieving a loved one, we have a two summer sessions of Grief Share that are available, all right? It is June uh, 27th, it's Sunday, and July 25th. Both times will run from 4 to 5.30. Uh, it'll be covering for the first one, June 27th, COVID-19 and grief. And then the next one will be anxiety and grief on the July 25th. So make sure, uh, if you know someone, Someone, let them know that this is a great opportunity for them just to be able to walk through their grief and uh, during difficult times. And so 
We were uh, given some news this last week of a couple from our church, uh, Lauren and uh, Diana Engelbrecht. They were part of the church in the early days, and uh, Lauren uh, went to go be with Jesus this last week and passed away. And so we're going to be having a celebration of life here at the church. They moved away to Kansas City, and so they are really connected still here, and so then we're going to be hosting that here. And we want to make sure that you are aware of it because they don't live here anymore. And so that's going to be taking place this Friday, and there's a meet and greet that will be taking place from four to six, and then the service will start at six o'clock, and the meet and greet will happen in the gathering room. And then I just encourage you to be praying for them this week just as well. Uh, They were just a huge part of the beginning of this church, so I want to make you aware. Um, Right now is the time of service for where we get to give for our tithes and our offerings, and so we just want to say thank you for your faithfulness in the tithe and your generosity through Kingdom Builders. As we were talking about BGMC, BGMC and Kingdom Builders are connected, and so today when you give, just make sure that you mark it for BGMC if you want it to go for my pink mohawk or my mohawk, all right? So make sure it gets designated to that. You can give by, there's boxes as you head out, and you can put it in there, and then also so you can give online, and so when you give online, there's a spot for giving areas, and just make sure that you put specific, put BGMC, otherwise just put, make sure put in the notes that goes to BGMC, otherwise it'll go to the tithe. So we want to make sure that you know how to give, because I know there's been some kids that have been pretty excited for me to get a mohawk, and so... I'm pretty excited about it as well. And so I want to just pray over our offering and pray for uh, the rest of this service, and let's just give it to God. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for what's happened this weekend so far, Lord. God, we thank you for what you've been doing in the kids' lives and the leaders' lives throughout as well. God, we give this service to you. God, we pray that you bless this offering, Lord. We thank you for the kids that have said yes to giving, Lord. Lord, that boys and girls across this world's lives will be changed because of their generosity. And so, God, help them to realize the impact that they're making by saying yes to uh, BGMC and Kingdom Builders, Lord. God, we give this service to you. We love and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to give it, pass it back to this awesome guy with a pink mohawk. (laughs) Thank you very much. Well, we've been talking about being champions for Jesus, champions in training for the past three days, and today is the culmination of that. So we'll be summarizing all that we talked about at VBS these past three days. And here to help me, I have the Ninja Attack Duck. Don't be afraid, grandparents, it's only a duck. Ow! Oh! Stop that. Oh, excuse me. All right, this is Duckling. Duckling, say hi to everybody. Hello, girls. No, 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 no. You need to say hi to everybody. Hello, girls. Oh, do it the right way. Are you sure? I'm sure. Hello, everybody. Okay. Duckling, today we're talking about something very important. You know what that is? Oh, yeah. What is it? Lunch. No. Something more important than lunch. Dinner. No, no. More important than lunch or dinner. Dessert. Oh. The kids say it with him all the time. Hey, Duckling, today we're talking about being champions in training. Oh, yeah. Do you know what that means? Oh, no. <laughs> well, we are in training. We're learning how to live for Jesus. We're, we're champions in training. We're getting ready for heaven. We're, we're in this race called life, and God's helping us so that we can run that race well and we can finish strong. And so today we're going to be talking about that all day. Sounds boring. What do you mean, boring? Will it be fun? Yes, it will be fun. Okay. Um, (laughs) All right. Well, hey, Duckling, uh, tell the kids something important to remember today, and then I'm going to put you back in the bag, and we are going to continue with this service. Do not lick your toes. Oh, that's yucky. All right, see you later. Hey, uh, Miss Angela is coming with some of the kids from the red team. They're coming up to lead us in worship this morning. Let's give them a hand. And wait a minute, boys and girls. Hey, Miss Angela, any kids that were at VBS and you know the songs, you can come right down across the front here and you can do the actions and have fun with it. And uh, everybody stand and let's do the actions to this song. Yay! Run the race that 
he set before me, I will run the race that he set for me. I will not give up, I'll claim the victory. And the victory is when I see my king. I will run the race that he set for me. set before me I will not give up I'll claim the victory and the victory is when I see my king I will run the race that he set before me whoa run the race whoa run the race I will not quit until I see his Two more songs these guys know so well, so you guys can stay if you want. James 122. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do not 
love. We thank you that you will never leave us. Pray that you be with these kids and touch their lives today. In your name we pray. Amen. Good job. Thank you guys so much. You can go back and sit down. And I am Dons. And we're here to get you fit. We can't say the other thing because we got into a lengthy legal battle with NBC and so we're getting you fit. We get you fit. And so it has been an incredible week, Ron. It has been awesome to see the boys and girls work so hard in so many different areas. I saw rockets. Oh. I saw baking. I saw coding and oh, sports. Wow. It oh, was incredible. It was, awesome. it was a great week. And then there was the Discovery Zone kids oh, and the theater those kids group. Rocked. Wow. That and was so awesome. We had some fun workouts with them, didn't yes. we? Yes, we did. Are you we guys did. ready to get fit? All right, let's get Whoa, fit. Let's get that. Fit. Are you ready to get fit? Yeah. Yes. All right, kids. Last week, or during the week, we started with stretches. So we're going to do some stretches, but you're not going to do them alone. I think your parents need to help you. What do you think? Mm -hmm. All right, yes. so I need everybody to stand up, all right, and reach the sky as high as you can. Oh, uh, there higher, we go. Higher. All right, and then we're going to go down very slowly. And try to touch your toes. Ooh, Here Dons, we go. Be, below my waist be careful. Be careful. I'm there. Uh -oh. Okay, now go up. Rons, I'm stuck again. Oh, no. Rons. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a lot better. They did oh, such good a to great have a helper. job. Oh, Rons is my be a great helper, Rons. Whew. And then, then now we got to do some exercises. We did some jumping jacks. Do you think they can do jumping jack kids with us? I think, we I think they jacks. can do jumping jacks with us. So let's oh, do some I jumping jacks. How many should we do, Ron? Let's do five jumping jacks. Five jumping jacks. All right, here we go, Ron. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Oh. That was a tough one. That Ooh. fifth one, I didn't think I was going to make, Ron. Even those big Ooh. kids got into that. Ooh. I know. All right. 
Let's do one last one. We jump ropes. Pretend you have a rope and you jump in the air. Let's do f how many again, Ron? Let's do five again. Five. All right, I'll help again. Wait. As high as you can jump. What? Yes, we don't want to tangle with ropes. Wait, what number do we start with again, Rons? One. Oh, yeah, one. That makes sense. Here we go. We're going to start with one. Jump as high as you can. Here we go. One, two, two three. Do a spin. One, Whoa. four, Whoa. and five. Oh, my back, Rons. Oh. Oh. I, I think we better sit down and introduce that, our contestants. Yes, please, Rons. Oh. <sighs> Wow, I hope no one else hurt their back. Is everybody else okay? Okay, good, good, good. There's a sale on ice cream box. Wow, it's been a good week. Oh, what a phenomenal week. We had amazing contestants up here, and we're going to introduce them. Incredible. There are some that are doing some other things, and we will explain that as we go. Would you like to start with our I contestants? I want to start. So the first day we had, our theme was Run to the Lord. And so the first contestant I want to introduce, give it up. I need audience to get it really loud. Here we go. Give it up for Tasha. Come on up, Tasha. Come on up, Tasha. Tasha, she had an interesting week. You know what? At the beginning of the week, she was in a competition. You know what happened? She cheated. And it was not good. But you know what she did? She asked God for forgiveness. And you know what? God forgave her. And you know what? The audience what happened was, is then the, they gave her a second chance. Just like God gives us a second yes, chance. Yes, isn't it incredible? That's and awesome. know what? It's been really fun to watch her. She's been helping others now. She used to be about win, 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 win. She's still about winning, but helping others along the way. It's incredible. Yes. So give it up for Tasha. Yes. Our next contestant is Jesse. Give it up for Jesse. Wow. Jessie was one of our finalists in the, fi in the first day, and she won first. Congratulations, Jessie. Our uh, lesson that day was run to the Lord, and Jessie was a rule follower. She followed many, 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 many rules, and she was awesome. But she felt like there was just one piece that was missing, and it was salvation through Jesus Christ. Give it up for Jessie! Yeah, Jessie! So then on the next day, day two, we talked about understand the Bible. Understand the Bible. And one of our contestants, hold on. Uh oh. Nikki fell asleep. Oh no. What does Nikki oh, like? Oh man. Naps. Naps. And so she's missing the competition because she, she fell asleep. Must have overslept. Oh man. All right. But one thing about Nikki I want to share is you know what? She realizes that sometimes, even when we follow God, that there's going to be some challenges along the way. And she looked into the Word of God, and she realized that God will help her in those difficult times, Rons. And then she did incredible. And even when you follow God, you still might have a difficult parts of your life. Very true. So let's give it up for Nikki, Nikki. one more time. Next up, we have Regina. Now, Regina is not here today because she became a social media influencer for Jesus. Oh. So let's give it up for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Her picture's up on the screen. Regina was also on Understanding the Bible, and Regina thought she could do everything right for God. She wanted to please God by being one of the best people that she could be. But she realized toward the end of the night that God loves you no matter what. And you want to do those things so that you can make God happy, not because you can get into heaven with them. Yeah. Beautiful that's good. point. That's Beautiful. good. On day three, we learned about that we're never alone, that we're never alone. And so our next contestant, he's not here with us today because he went on to the world championship of water bottle flipping runs. Wow. That's incredible. He got 25 in the first service. Let's give it up 25. for Brett. Brett is incredible. And so it was fun to watch Brett. You know what? He came out sometimes and he thought he could do it all on his own. But then he realized that God was with him and he needed God's help. And then also to allow others to help him along the way as well. Exactly. And last but not least, we have Benny. Come on up, Benny. Benny's in the house. Benny also learned that he is never alone with God. He was very scared this whole week, but found that God is going to help you through those tough times. 
God, you are never alone in the presence of God. And he even used some of our other contestants to help him. Tasha helped him on the last night to end up winning the final round. Give it up for Benny! Yeah, Benny! Give it up for the helper, That's Tasha! Incredible. What great contestants that we've had. But Ron, I think we can't just end it like this. We need to have one more game. I agree. Is that why they have water bottles with I, them? Maybe. We could do something with water bottles. We could drink them. Stay hydrated. Oh, well, we could drink Very them, but that's not, I don't think that will work, Ron. Mm. They could throw them up in the air. <gasps> and do I what? don't know what from there. What's what, next? Does, what happens after you throw them up in the air? Oh, they fall. They <laughs> fall down. Yes, they fall, Ron. We're so, going to see a competition of them. Water bottle flipping. Oh, Who yes. can get the most in one minute? All let's right, bring the let's table get over. the table over them. Let's go. All right, contestants. <gasps> oh. Let's go. Rods, where are you going? Rods! It's been a very exhausting week. Whoa. Rods, there we go. All right, let's pick Come up our contestants. Up. Let's give them a hand, you guys. Give them a hand. Woo yes, let's cheer these guys on. We have some awesome contestants. Make sure you cheer them on, all right? We're going to have our countdown started. The timer will start behind me. Begins in three, three two, two, one. Oh, this competition. Oh, oh we have an early start over there. Wow, that's great. Oh, Benny. Benny's going to get one. Benny and Jesse. Oh, Benny just, oh, Benny just Benny got, got his one. first one. Benny got two in a row. Oh, Off Jesse's the table. Up. Two in a row with Jesse. This is incredible. I've never seen anything like this, Make Ron. Sure cheering. Benny, Jesse, and Here Tasha. we go. Let's cheer on Benny. Let's cheer on Jesse! And then we got Tasha! Here we go, we got 30 seconds. This is where it gets intense. This is crazy. Here we go. Whoa. It could go anywhere, Ron. It could go up, it could go down. I don't know. It could maybe go Ooh. sideways. Jesse just got one. She hasn't gotten one in a while. We got 18 seconds. Oh, Benny is coming up from mine. He's go. got another one. 13 oh, Benny. seconds. All right, audience, I need you to cheer Ten. about it. Yeah, let's go! Right. Ron, I'm tired from watching. I'm very tired, too. I can't Ooh. imagine how tired they are. Their arm muscles are like this. Benny, are you okay? I, oh, he's okay. Good. I feel like I need some of this fitness thing you speak of. Let's see what they got. Benny, how many did you come out with? 13. Wow, well, give it up for Benny. 13. Jesse, how much did you come out with? 18. Wow. And Tasha, how many did you have? 15, a very close race, but that means Jesse's our Jesse's winner! Jesse's our winner! Good job, Jesse! That's incredible. Wow. Great job, contestants. Great, job. Oh, great sportsmanship, too. I love that. You guys may head off stage. You guys were an awesome addition to our VBS. We have the awesome youth in our church, I'm telling you, the best. All right. I think, Ron's. we need to take the table away, and we need to bring it up to the awesome Miss Darlene! Hello there. Hello there. Oh, hello there. Hello there. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, you didn't Time for another Bible story, a yes. story from the Word of God, Let the me, Holy Book. I was going to The inspired Word of the Prophets, the Scripture. You. Yes. The B I B L E, right. that's the book for me. Yes, that's right. I that. stand alone on the yes, B I B, so the Bible. B -I -B. You may read. Let me introduce you. You are Limey. I am Limey. Yes. She is human. Thank you. <laughs> the Thank human you. will I, read the yes. story. All of our Bible stories this week have come from the book of Luke. Are you okay? I'm has all it right. Been, has it been a long week? I know. CPR. Were you, were you doing jumping jacks and jumping rope and oh, yeah. stretching? Oh, I needed that. Oh, I bet you did. Yes. yes. We all need that sometimes. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Say, Darlene? Yes, I was it's going It's time for the Bible story. I was going to read the Bible story. I feel like we're off track here. No, I don't know why. Okay. All right. Well, the lights are nice. Luke, yes. Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 in and the Bible. Starting at verse 35. Verse 35. As Jesus approached Jericho, he saw Chick fil A and said, Let's stop, buddies. I love that iced tea, that sweet 
tea. Oh, that is the best. No, but Chick-fil-A. that's not. No, no. There I was, could eat there seven times There each was day. no Chick-fil-A in Where Jericho. Where the children laugh hey. and mothers pray. Hey, Limey. What? No Chick-fil-A in Jericho. Oh, sorry. You know, it was kind of like Sundays around here. No Chick-fil-A. Oh. I know. But However did yeah, they live? I don't know. As Jesus approached Jericho... A blind man was sitting Wait. by the roadside Wait. Beg- begging. What? I could be a blind man. You can? My brain's made of foam rubber. <laughs> okay. All right. Then that qualifies you. I could you. do it. Except you have to cover your eyes too because, yeah, okay. I'm blind. He was sitting by the roadside. I cannot see. Begging. begging. I'm begging. Yes, okay. Give me your money. No, <laughs> Okay. I want money, large bills only, please. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, do you hear the crowd? I hear the crowd. Yeah, when he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. What's happening, they crowd? Told, they told him. Que pasa? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. What? Yes. In our town? Yes. I can't believe it. I know. So he called out. Jesus! Jesus! No, you have to be much louder than Jesus, that. Jesus, I'd like an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> That's not what he called out. Jesus. Maybe some fish and chips. No, Jesus, son of David, have mercy Jesus, on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah, that's good, that's good. And those who, who led the way rebuked him. That means, you know, they told him, be quiet. Oh, dear. Yeah. What did he do? But he shouted all the more. All the more? No. No. All the more. No, 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 no. What's that mean, darling? No, that means he's I gonna get it. he's gonna shout more. Okay, son more. of no. I'm sorry, I'm not. More. Explaining. No, say, son of David. Son of David. Have mercy on. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on me. I need it. Yes. Have mercy. On, you can't see. What? You can't see still. Oh, sorry. All right. Have mercy on me. And I'm Jesus, still blind. Jesus stopped. And ordered the man to be brought to him. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Are you gonna, Wait a minute. You, that's What's you, going on? That, you have to I fell asleep one. there for a minute. I, I don't know. Sorry. Why. All right. Jesus asked you, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I would like to see. Lord, I want to see. How did you know that was in there? You did it for a service. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus Je- All right. Go Jesus on. said to him, "Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you." And then it went like this. Whammo! Well, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, there's a guy with a mohawk down there. <laughs> no, no, pay no attention. What are you the- doing down no, there? No, 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 no. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, okay? That's Wait a hey, minute. No, no. I know you. Yes, yeah, stop. Stop. You're the bearded one. Now, immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. I will God. follow, I will follow Jesus. When all Everywhere <laughs> he leads me, I will follow. That's not it, though. Follow him. Because when all the people saw it, in my heart they saying, also praised him. God. Did you hear Praise that? God. Everybody Honolulu. said it. Everybody said it at the same Hallelujah. That's what I said. Yes. Honolulu. When all the people saw it, that means everybody in the crowd, they also praised God. That's Go ahead, your- everybody. Praise God. Woo! All right. <laughs> all right, Talini, I must go. It's amazing. I am the weakest link. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. It's amazing what can happen when one person is touched by God and one person realizes they are never alone because God is always with them. PG, it's up to you. Well, you, well okay, it's up to you now. Oh, man. Oh, man. Thank you, Darlene. Oh, boy. So, you know, the first thing I'd like to do while these great guys are putting that up there for me, is, is I just would love to, uh, to thank the people that served at VBS this week. We had some incredible helpers. You know, at VBS this week, we, had, we averaged 95 kids per session, and we had about 60 volunteers serving those 95 kids. Let's give a hand to all the people that helped with VBS. Listen. 
I, I walked around every night to the different rooms, and I'd get in the rooms multiple times through the night, and I never saw one child off in a corner bored. Everybody was engaged. The, the people did a terrific job of helping the kids have a fun time and learn new skills. It was awesome. But VBS was put on by a group of people in the church. We had a committee that met. In fact, we started meeting a year ago, January, and then COVID happened. And we had to pivot, and we had to like change it and put it online last year. And then those same people got together with me in January this year and began planning. And they're the ones that really did the hard work behind the scenes to make it happen. So if you're part of that committee, stand to your feet. We want to recognize you today. Stand up. Come on. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. There they are. Thank you. God bless you. Wow. Um, I could not have done that without these people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Father's Day. I say happy Father's Day to every dad that's sitting here, every dad online. Happy Father's Day. Um, <laughs> we have kids sitting with their parents today, uh, not just because it's Father's Day, but it's our last VBS service. And at this time, you know, Father's Day is one of those days where we celebrate, but for some people it's not so happy. Pastor Dan mentioned that already. If you've lost your father this year through death or something, uh, it, it, it can be a sad day. I remember that after my dad had passed. It was a sad day the next Father's Day. But in families, there are all different things that happen. And so in some families, dad's just not there, either because of death or divorce or other circumstances. And so Father's Day can be kind of a drag, and we don't want it to be that way for you. We want you to be blessed. In fact, at the end of the service, we're going to bless everybody in this room with something special. We'll tell you about that later. Okay? But today... We're going to talk about Jesus and being champions for Jesus. Two years ago, May, I was in the Philippines doing some training of, of children's leaders for that part of the world, and we went to King's Garden Orphanage. And this is an orphanage that was paid for by BGMC, the same group of missions people that we give to with our kids and kingdom builders, and they pay for the orphans' food and their clothing and their school supplies, and I got to visit that orphanage. And I was sitting there having snacks with these kids, and there was these two little girls sitting by me, and one of them asked about my parents. And I had to tell her, my, both my mother and my father had passed. They were both dead. They're with Jesus. And she just said, oh, so you're an orphan like we are. And I'd never thought of myself as an orphan before, and I said, well, I guess I am. And then she did this. She put her hand up on my shoulder, and she said, it's okay. Jesus will make it better. I'm like, oh my goodness, my heart just melted right now. It's okay. Jesus will make it better. Moms, dads, it's okay. Jesus will make it better. He will. I'm talking to dads today, but this is message will be for moms, teenagers, kids, single people, old people, young people. It's going to work. You know, we're not perfect, are we? Moms and dads aren't perfect. There's no perfect dad in this room. But it's okay. Jesus' parents lost him. Think about it. Talk about imperfect parents. They lost the Son of God in Jerusalem. Come on. That's like, what? What? I'm glad they put that story in there because there's hope for the rest of us, <laughs> okay? If they can do that with Jesus, there's hope for us. You know, Benjamin Kearns, a, a, a Christian writer on parenting, says, we are helpless children who are in desperate need of love and affection, and God is our parent who is never too busy or distracted to get down onto our level and to care for us. Dads, moms, take a deep breath. It's okay. Jesus will make it better. Our verse this week has been Hebrews 12, 1b. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. But how can we run that race? How can we be champions? Uh, you know, we're in training, but how can we win? Three things that we talked about this week, and we'll talk about them this morning. Receive Jesus, understand his word, and you're never alone. So first we're going to talk about receive Jesus. I'll try to keep this short for the kids' sake because they're sitting here with you and they're doing a great job, by the way. You're doing a great job. Thanks, Lukey. All right, so here we go. Receive Jesus. Everybody say it. Receive Jesus. By the way, if you ever want to come to Kids Church, this is how I preach in there. Okay? You're welcome. Come on in. 
Receive Jesus. We all need to receive Jesus. If you want to even get a good start in this race, you need Jesus. There's no getting around it. Uh, Fred Lebo, the co-founder of the New York City Marathon, said, it doesn't matter whether you come in first, the middle of the pack, or last. You can say, I have finished the race. There's a lot of satisfaction in that. Wow, there is satisfaction in finishing, but isn't it better when you win? Come on, come on. Listen, we can only be in first place if we first placed our trust and faith in Jesus Christ. We need Jesus. Proverbs 1 7 says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Acts 4 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Receive Jesus. Pastor mentioned it in his opening video this morning. We need to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. If we want to be the kind of parents, the kind of people that finish the race strong, we need Jesus. Receive Jesus. When Stephen was being stoned, we read something interesting. Because Stephen looks up to heaven. He's being stoned because he loves Jesus. People are killing him for his faith. And he looks up to heaven and he says, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. This is the only time in Scripture where Jesus, the Son of Man, is pictured standing by his Father. Every other instance, he's sitting down. It, he says he sits at the right hand of the Father. All over Scripture. I believe that as Stephen was crossing that finish line, dying for his faith, that the Son of God himself gave him a standing ovation. And I dream someday of Jesus doing that for me. Don't you dream that? Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you love it if when you cross that finish line, Jesus is saying, well done! Good for you! You're a champion! That's what I would like. Glenn Cunningham was a long-distance runner in the 1930s in America. He grew up in Kansas. When he was eight years old, there was a fire in his schoolhouse that killed his brother and burned his legs badly. So badly the doctors wanted to amputate his legs, but he begged them not to, and his parents stopped the doctors, and they didn't do that. It took him two years to learn how to walk. Here's what history says about him. He, quote, he overcame his injuries because of a positive attitude and a strong faith in Christ. His favorite verse, Isaiah 40, 31, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Glenn Cunningham is considered to be one of the best long-distance runners that ever lived on planet Earth. He set the mile record in 1934. He ran in two Olympics. The kid who was burned so bad he couldn't even walk. Why? Because he received Jesus. He put his faith and trust in Jesus. He persevered. He ran the race well because he started it right. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can start the race right today. You can receive Jesus today. You, you may have a track record where you're saying, wow, i just blown it all my life. That's okay. That's okay. He didn't expect us to be perfect the first time. There's no runner on the track that's perfect the first time. God loves you. So we move on from receive, and we, then we say understand, because we're spelling the word run. Did you hear that? Did you see that? R-U-N. Receive, understand, never. Okay, so, so understand God's word. Everybody say, understand God's word. See, if we're going to run the right path, if we're going to run the right trail, we're going to have to do that according to His Word. Psalms has so many things to say about that. Uh, Psalm 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 19.9, how can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. Sometimes we get road maps out. I got this one at a rest area in Iowa. And we like look at the map to try to figure out how to get somewhere. The Bible is a road map for us, showing us how to run this race. We need God's Word in order to run the race well. 
Uh, I don't know if any of you have watched races. I've been in some races, and, I, and I've watched races, and, and there comes a point in long-distance races, cross-country and, and marathons and things, where they have water stations. You ever see that? Or they, you know, there's people like, here's water, here's Gatorade. You know, they're, they're like, you know, pumping them up and encouraging them. And, and we need those kind of encouragements all along the way. Uh, Psalm 119 and 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. God's word directs us. God's word guides us. But here's the problem. Like dads, let's talk to dads. Dads, we, uh, we don't like to ask for directions, do we? Let's admit it, guys. And even if we're wrong, we don't like to ask. And, and, and you know what? Uh, there's probably, probably 80% of the dads in this room think that they can read a map better than their, than their wives can. There's something about that. We're just guys. We just do that thing. And we could get lost, and it doesn't matter. One time I followed the GPS to a cornfield. <laughs> I was supposed to go to speak at a church, and I was in a cornfield. You know, because Darlene said, this doesn't look like we're going the right way. I said, no, I plugged it in there. You know, it's okay. I got it. You know, and we get a cornfield, and then we looked at the address, and I plugged it in wrong. Hey, do you know what? Last year I had some projects, like my handle broke on my car door. Has that ever happened to you guys? The driver's door handle, it just wouldn't do anything. I'd have to roll down the window and open the car door. And I go, this is not the 1960s. I should be able to open a car door. And so I looked on YouTube and learned how to fix my car door. I found some videos. I watched the videos. I went to Napa. I got the part. I, I sat in my driveway and took my door apart and fixed my car door following a YouTube video. Anybody ever do that? Maybe not a car door, but something else. Okay. And, and then last year, Dave Shutnik and I put in a step next to my patio, and, and I'd never put in a step before, so I watched YouTube videos. I watched five different guys put in concrete stairs, and the next day, Dave and I put it in, and it looks pretty good. Do you know what the Bible is? The Bible's our spiritual YouTube. You have a problem, you have a question, you don't know how to handle something? The race is getting hard. The race is getting t terrible. It's uphill and you don't know what to do. The Bible has all the answers. They're all over in this book. It's perfect. It, it, it's our own spiritual YouTube and we don't even need Wi-Fi. You know, we just look it up. That's why it's important for us to get into God's Word every single day so we know where to find the answers. And we work with each other on that. Um, I also brought a tackle box along here. Uh, Wade Jansen lent this to me. Um, when guys go fishing, they take tackle boxes, right? It's a dad thing. I know a lot of dads do that. I know there's some moms who do that too, so that's okay. But, but what, when you go fishing and you have all the tackle and everything you need to catch the different kinds of fish we have around here, you don't leave this in the garage and go down to the river. No, you take it with you, right? The Bible is our tackle box. Well, okay, let me put it this way. Some of you guys are looking at me like I'm weird, okay? In the, in the old days when there were mountain men on planet Earth, they had something called the possibles bag. And they carried it over their shoulder, and it had everything they might possibly need to survive. It had flint and steel. It had a needle and thread. Some of them had a portion of Scripture in there. Um, guys carried what they thought they need. In modern terms, it's called the diaper bag. Moms have this thing called a diaper bag. It's everything you might possibly need in case the kid has a blowout at church. All right? We know what we're talking about, right? And so, so the tackle box is the man's version of a diaper bag because he puts everything he might need in there, you know, and, and, and that's what we do. Well, the Bible is God's version of all of these things because everything we need is in the Word of God. We can go to God's Word, and the more we understand it, the easier it's going to be to run. Now, will there still be hills? Yes. Will there still be big rocks? Yes. Will we find hurdles sometimes that are hard to jump over and fall on our face? Certainly. But God's Word will help us through. Coach Jesus will help us if we spend time in His Word. So we, we receive Jesus, we understand His Word, and we know that we're never alone. Say, never alone. See, I'm almost done, guys. Never alone. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. He is God with us. I want to tell you a story today called The Hill. And when I tell this story, when I say The Hill, I want you to go, 
Dun, dun, dun. The hill. <laughs> Good job. When my kids were young, when our kids were young, um, one of the dad things I did was teach our kids how to ride bikes. We did this in different places wherever we lived. And, and for eight years, we lived in Springfield, Missouri. And two of our kids came to bike riding age when we lived there. And so I can remember teaching Rachel how to ride a bike. I took her to the Nathaniel Green Park. In the Nathaniel Green Park, there was this big mound of dirt that was probably left there when they, the construction guys built the park. Um, it was probably about half the size of this room and at the highest point, about 12 feet higher than the surrounding terrain. But it gradually swept off on one side onto a long straight field about 100 yards long, and it was a perfect place to learn how to ride a bike. So I took Rachel to the hill. <laughs> now the first thing we did was I ran her around in the parking lot, <laughs> and I held the back of the bike seat. And I said, just get used to how it feels. You know, and I took her through that, and then we did that in the field, because it was a little bumpier, and, and she got used to it, and then I said, you've been doing so good at this, and by the way, I was really tired by that time, I said, I'm going to take you to the hill. <laughs> so we took the bike up to the top, I set her on the seat, I said, Rachel, gravity times speed equals balance. Science is our friend today, Rachel. Here we go. I said, don't worry about a thing. I'll be running alongside of you. And so she's on the bike. We're on the hill. And I say, okay, here we go. And I give her a little push, and I run behind her. And she goes for a little while, and she starts to wobble, and pretty soon the bike crashes. And she's like, gravity times speed equals crash. She was right. She was right. So what did we do? I ran her around the field for a while again. Then I took her back to the hill. I don't know how many times we did that. I got all my steps in on the Fitbit, that's for sure. But you know what? By the end of the day, Rachel was riding her bike. And you know, this race we're in, sometimes we trip over hurdles fall on our faces, but Coach Jesus is right there. He never leaves us. Like I was there for my little girl teaching her to ride a bike, Father God is there for you and for me and for every boy and girl in this room so that we can run through this life and we can make it. And when we fall, he picks us up, and when we make a mistake or a wrong turn, he gets us back on course, and he's right there, never leaving us, always being with us. That's the way he is. Let me tell you guys just a little bit about my dad. Uh, my dad was a pretty good dad when I was younger, when I was uh, pre-10 years old, let's say. Um, he told stories, brilliant stories at bedtime. He, uh, we did things in the yard, we played games, and, and he was a little league coach for us. And he, and he was probably did all the things where you would say, that's a pretty good American dad right there. He's, he's treating his kids right, he's, you know. But my dad had served in the Second World War, and he'd had some shell shock, they called it back then, PTSD now. And, and he'd overcome that enough to be a pretty good dad for a while. But there came a time when I was 10 years old where that overcame him. And my dad had a mental breakdown, and as a result of that, my mom and dad were divorced, and my mom raised nine kids by herself. And life went on in the Gruber home. And you know what? Jesus helped my mom. And if you're a single mom in this room today or online today, know this. If there's no dad in the home, Father's Day is just as much for you as anybody else. God will help you. He's a father to the fatherless. He takes care of you. He's going to be there with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He's with you even to the end of your patience. 28 years after my dad had his mental breakdown, God healed him. Totally. Totally healed of his mental condition. A guy that was taking two to 3,000 milligrams of psych drugs every day was taking nothing else the rest of his life. A guy who had five or six panic attacks every day had no panic attack the rest of his life. God had totally healed my dad. And then my dad came to know Jesus. 
And my dad began to live for Jesus, and instead of looking back at this 28 lost years, lost in mental illness and cruelty and hurt, and, and instead of dwelling on that, he chose to dwell on Jesus, the author and finisher of his faith, and he grew in Christ, and every morning he'd get up at 4 o'clock and he'd pray and read his Bible for two or three hours. He became my prayer partner. And until he went to heaven, he was my prayer partner. And I tell you that today to give you hope. It doesn't matter what kind of dad you are, what you've been through, or what your track record has been up to this day. We can run the race from this day on, from this starting line on. We can run the race with God's help if we receive Jesus, if we understand his word, if we recognize that he's, we're never alone. He is with you. Kids, he is with you. In the dark of the night when you're laying in bed and you've had a bad dream, Jesus is with you. He will help you. So, we're going to pray today. But let me read a scripture for you. It's from Hebrews 12. This is where our verse comes from, but I want to read this whole surrounding portion. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Wow, that's a mouthful. Bottom line is this. We can run this race with perseverance, with endurance, in one version, it says, with patience. And we can finish strong. We can win if we've got Jesus. So we're going to pray today. Two prayers, and then we're going to give away prizes. we got prizes to give away, kids. Two prayers. First prayer, you're here today and you need Jesus. You're here today and you know that you've done wrong, you've sinned, you've blown it, you've been running this race the wrong way. Guess what? God didn't want you to be perfect before you came to him. In fact, Romans says, God showed his great love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, while we're still blowing it, he sent Christ to die for us. So Jesus is here today. He's here to forgive you. He's here to help you. He's here to give you new life. Let's start from this point on, this starting line on in our race of life. Let's receive Jesus. So I want to pray with everybody in the room. I'm not going to embarrass you by bringing you to the front, but I just want you to pray with all of us. Kids, pray with us. Teens pray with us. Adults pray with us. Let's close our eyes right now and think about Jesus and pray after me. Say this. Say, Jesus, I want to be a champion. I want to run the race correctly. But I've sinned. I've done wrong things. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Wash away my sin. Make me brand new. I give my life to you. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you are with me now. Be my Savior. Be my coach. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it, Jesus really has forgiven you. The Bible says, if any man says he has no sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God has just forgiven you because you prayed that with a sincere heart. And the angels in heaven are having a party. That's right. That's an awesome thing. Okay, we're going to pray another prayer, and here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to have family stand up. If you're with your family, stand together. If your family's here, get with them. Cameron, you want to go stand with your folks? Okay, stand with your dad over there. All right. Um, if you don't have family here, stand up and get together with some other people. We're the family of God. Come on. Okay, don't be a Scrooge on this. Let's all do this together. I want you to pray for each other, and I'm just going to lead in prayer, and you can pray in your own words. But let's pray for each other that God would help us to, number one, Understand his word better. Take time in his word every single day. And then number two, that he would help us to understand that he is with us always. That he recognizes his presence with us. 
So I'm going to pray over you guys. You guys pray for each other right now. Something they did in the Bible, they call it the laying on of hands. You can hold hands or put a hand on somebody's shoulder and pray for them. That's one of the things we do around here, and it's okay to do that, all right? So let's pray together right now, and if you're online, you can pray with us too. And I'll just pray for you. You pray in your own words over your family. Kids, pray for your dads right now. Jesus, we pray right now for the dads in this room that you would bless them. We pray now, Lord Jesus, for these families. Bless them, Lord. Provide for their needs. Be with them in a special way today. Surround them with your presence. Where the Father is absent, I pray that you would make up the difference, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would step into these homes and do new things in the lives of these boys and girls, these teenagers, these adults in this room. We give ourselves to you. Help us to understand your word better and to spend time in it every day. Help us, Lord, to know that we're never alone. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Everybody, you better sit down because now we're going to give prizes away. If you're watching with us online today, I'm sorry. We're not giving you prizes. Sorry. Uh, sometime we'll figure out prizes for the online people, but today we're giving it out the real thing in real time really here. Awesome. Hey, Pastor Dan, what hey, do you got? Hey, I have something pretty amazing. So today is Father's Day, right, guys? So happy Father's Day to all those dads out there, grandparents, aunt, our uncles. We think you're just absolutely awesome. And so every year we usually try to give something out to dads. That's right. So we're going to so, have guys coming down the aisle while we're talking so, right well, now. No. Come on down. Oh, the start, host, yes. Yeah, come I down thought you meant the dads. Out. No, no, not the dads. We're going to have our hosts coming down. <laughs> That's great. Yep. And they're going to start handing them out. But as they hand them out, this is going to everyone. Yes, So it dads, is. you get to go ahead and treat the whole family to four queens. So this is going to four queens. Now, all right? Pastor Dan. So I want to go over a few things. It's a $5 certificate. $5. It's for the Waverly Four Queens. All right, and it expires July 31st this year. And so you want to okay. make sure to get it in. Well, Not here's the deal. Here's the deal, dads. A lot of churches, a lot of churches, the dads come in and they say, hey, we want all the dads to get their free Phillips screwdriver on the way out. And the kids are going, I don't need a screwdriver. Dad has 50 of those. So we thought, you know, if you give a dad a gift certificate, then he takes the family and he's got to pay for the whole rest of them. So why not give it to everybody? We want to give it to everyone. We want to bless everyone and just have a good time making a memory together as a family. That's and that's right. what it's all that's about, right. making memories together as a family. And so make sure, again, Waverly here, uh, our Four Queens. And I just want to say Four Queens was extremely awesome to us, partnering with us to be able to do this. Oh, we yeah. couldn't have done it oh, without yeah. them. And so Four Queens has been a okay. huge blessing. I, Pastor Dan, I'm going to keep talking. Why don't you go get yes. some prizes? Oh, we have back. prizes. We have some big prizes to give away. And there's a blue bucket in the hall, and somebody's bringing it down here. Ella, who's that? Is that Ella? Bringing it down here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. It's the bucket. The bucket. Okay, here's the, here's the deal. First of all, uh, can I just say this? It, uh, guy, guys, that you put in the, in the box in the back of the room. You, you, there's a box in the back of the room. You want him to get a mohawk, right? You want him to get a mohawk. Don't forget, I guess those kids are reminding us, don't forget to give Pastor Dan a pink mohawk matching mine. You can do that this week by giving. Okay, um, can I just say this? If you have a baby in the house, get one for the baby. I know mom's going to eat it. It's all right. Amen. If, if you're pregnant, get one for the baby because you're eating for two. Yeah. Okay. All right, Pastor Dan, we have some stuff to give away. Yes, we, we do. Where stuff. we start? There's some well, awesome stuff. I'm going to set this right over here. Okay, that one's pretty good. Because yeah. that's the big prize. Okay. That's the boat ride. We're starting with, with the water Jonathan. balloons. Uh, let's get a water fun thing for the yard. So water balloons, and then there's it's a slip and slide with water balloons at the bottom of the slip and slide. I've never done anything like that before, but that sounds pretty exciting. Okay, I just picked a name out of the hat. All right. Uh, one winner per family, or one family can, family can only win once, right? Yes, correct. I okay, because they should only put their name in there once. Uh, Weston and Kinley Whitcomb put their... There we go. I guess you guys get that. Hey, Lucas. There you go. Where are we going next, PG? Well, somebody, somebody like folded it all up. Um, this one is Matt Harkin family, the Matt Harkin family. It's the Harkin family. Where are they at? Oh, oh they're here coming. Here she comes. Here she comes. All right. This is for the jumbo whatever this is. Badminton? Badminton. Badminton. Hey, I bought it. I didn't know what it was. 
uh, the Varnum family. Oh, Woohoo! <laughs> Jumbo Batman, okay. Which one are you going with? We got Jumbo Checkers. Should we go with that one? Jumbo Checkers, hey, everybody okay. wants that. Uh, the Angie Jamesi family. Woo! Jumbo Checkers. Now, uh, parents, just so you know, everybody in the room, during Vacation Bible School, we gave away the worst prizes in America. Um, we told the kids we were giving away terrible prizes, and we gave away six of them every night. Yeah. And they still wanted them. They kept on wanting them. They still wanted them, but incredible. that was okay. But, but these are not terrible. Okay, we had to kind of tape this box, and I ripped it when I got it out of the trunk of my car. That's the one I ripped. So I'll carry it with both hands Sounds on the sides. Good. It's a jumbo bowling set, which I really wanted to win. Uh, but this one goes to Briley Johnson. Briley Johnson. I don't see I Briley. I see some movement. I oh, see there's some Briley. Movement. Hey. Wow. There you go. Well, Pastor Dan, this is, where the, this is the real deal now. Yes. This is the certificate. Hold it up. Uh, we, we, it's sealed. We, I've been, I'm digging through here. So did, okay. you, did you share what this is? Uh, it's, it's a terrible price. I don't know. Okay. If, if, you, if you're hot, it might be nice if, if when it's nice and hot outside to do this. It is good for a boat ride with Pastor Jonathan. So. Okay. Okay, this is it. Now listen, that means you go on his boat on the river. He tells you stories. He has a cooler full of pop for yep, the kids. It'll be great. Snacks, the whole thing. Yep. But you have to wait till he's home on va from vacation. Yep, and it, you get it set up. Uh, the Wade and Tasha Broom family. <laughs> All right. All right, that, that's it for the prizes, Pastor wow, Dan. Wow, that is uh, incredible. Everybody has an ice cream certificate. We've given the prizes out. Yes. Looks like VBS is over. Yeah, I, I think we, one thing is we finished VBS. We want to pray, and we want to finish that way. And so, again, if you did not receive a gift certificate, please see the host when you leave. We want to make sure everybody walks away with something today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much for everybody in this room, Lord, that everyone that participated in VBS this weekend, Lord. God, I thank you for the kids. Continue to bless them. Continue to allow them to grow in their relationship with you. We thank you for the leaders and the blessing they were to spend time and to uh, pour themselves into allowing the kids to know more about you, Lord. Bless them, Lord. God, we pray for the dads in this room. God, I pray that you give them just an extra boost of energy, Lord, Father God, for the things that they do for their kids, Lord. God, we thank you for all you do in our lives, Lord. We thank you for loving us and being our Heavenly Father, Lord. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week at 8.30 or 10.15 service. And look for Pastor Dan's Mohawk next week because you gave generously.